Good morning! This is Colin again. Welcome back to my channel. And as promised, I wanted to show you my Cattleya walkeriana. So this has to be my favorite uh, orchid species, and only because it actually blooms for me. Uh, I would say Cattleya clandiae is my favorite because it's spotted and has kind of a similar shape to Cattleya walkeriana and it's fragrant too. But this one blooms pretty frequently for me. I've gotten it to bloom two times this year and it just does not seem fussy at all. I mean it even bloomed with a, kind of a poor root system when I initially got it. So really highly recommend this one as long as it's blooming size. A lot of these plants that I see for sale and have received in the past are a little bit smaller than what I would consider blooming size even though the vendors are saying they are blooming size so be aware of that. Um, what else can I say about her? She is very fragrant and uh, she is pretty large. Here's my hand for reference. It's about the size of the palm of my hand. Uh, yeah, very, very gorgeous Cattleya, and I just love the colors on this. The camera's making the colors a bit more saturated than what they actually are, and a bit more purple. In reality, this, this plant's like a very kind of interesting lavender pink, and the, the, I, I just love open lips on Cattleyas. I'm not a big fan of like tubular lips, so that's just right up my alley. Um, again, this is a Cattleya walkeriana, so it blooms off of specialized blooming growth so I'll just show you one here and uh, here it is you can see there's no leaf sometimes it does bloom off of growth with leaves as you can see there's a spike on that one but if you look closely that leaf is a bit smaller than a non blooming leaf you see that's a bit smaller so it's still stunted and I have her growing in hydroponics you've seen it multiple times some of my root tips are coming back so that's good she's gonna take over this uh, hydroponic setup pretty soon so that's her, and I have another thing that is new that just opened up. Here she is. This is Neostylus Lucneri Bluebird, and I also have her set up in hydroponics medium, which is uh, wick watering with paper towels. And I think my roots on this are doing pretty good. I've got some new ones popping out. And I've also got some uh, exploratory roots actually inside the pot. And I have a few in the reservoir. I was trying to show you. Oh, here we go. There's some right in there. And she is fragrant also. It's hard to describe the scent. It's like honey jasmine. Uh, that's probably the best way I know how to describe it. Not very strong. You have to kind of put your nose in it to really get a good uh, whiff of fragrance but uh, still nice and I, I just love how delicate these are. My camera never wants to focus on these small ones. I'm trying to get a good shot, but it doesn't seem to know where to focus. There we go, I think that might be okay. And another detail that's kind of lost is they have these like long nectaries kind of down here. And it's kind of neat because they start pointing up and then they kind of flip and elongate as they mature in age. And this is another plant that blooms multiple times a year. I think this is the third or fourth time she's bloomed this year. And I think she might actually have another spike poking out from uh, the leaf axis, so that'll be pretty neat when uh, I get another flush of blooms off of her. So that's that. I'm going to give you a few more updates. My path is still in bloom. Still really nice, still gorgeous, still doing well. And I have something new in bloom, other than my Sherry Baby and, uh, what else do I have? I have Sherry Baby and a Cattleya in bloom. This is um, Rinkavola Jiminy Cricket, and the clonal name is Superbug. And I've been having issues with her. She seems like she bud blasts quite a bit, but I'm hopeful this set of buds here will push out and work okay. And another thing that's been happening to me is my buds have been getting caught in the leaves. My leaves aren't opening all the way. I'm not sure why. And actually with this set of leaves, I put my thumb in here and I split them down the middle just to make them open up a little bit more because like I saw there was buds. I saw there was a fatness in the leaf. So I decided to free them from there and hopefully they don't blast because this plant's been bud blasting a lot which is unfortunate. 
I also have her in hydroponics. Seems like it's doing well. So fingers crossed, because this one has a really amazing fragrance. It's like uh, gardenia at night, or something very sweet and kind of citrusy. It's very beautiful and very powerful. And the blooms themselves are very fluffy, and they have those frilly edges from the Rincolalia digbiana. So really awesome. And the last update I wanted to give you is on my Catlia Shinshiang Diamond. And I am very depressed about this one. I've been noticing on a few of my plants that I have little tiny skinny bugs crawling around on my buds. Uh, let me see if I can get this to focus. But anyways, these little tiny skinny bugs, I think they're thrips. And I don't know if you can see this, but I had six buds on this spike and I'm down to two. And once I noticed there was bugs and that my buds were starting to die, I decided to spray it with neem oil, so hopefully that worked. I actually just saw another one of those bugs uh, right when I pulled it out from the grow uh, area. So I don't think it's working too well, unfortunately. I might need to do a different type of treatment to get these bugs off of my plant. Very sad, because this one has a beautiful fragrance too. It's very spicy, very apricotty and uh, the colors are just out of this world. I really wanted to show you this one, so uh, I need to pray for the, these two buds to actually make it so I can have something else to film. But anyways, other than that, I just have the other things in Spike so far. I got the Zygo, I've got the Sherry Baby, I might even have a few other Catlias in bud, uh, no idea. Oh, another topic I wanted to say. This is gonna be the last one. You know how Catlias can be super fragrant? Well, apparently when the blooms die, that oil that makes the plant fragrant also starts to rot and die. And so, if you leave your flowers on, you'll get this nasty, overpowering, musty smell that takes over the whole kitchen. And this is something I need to take care of because my wife can't stand the scent. But just something to keep in mind, you know, your Catlias smell really beautiful when they're alive and when they die, they smell really nasty, like Bulbophyllum style, rotten leaves nasty. Anyways, with that, I'm going to let you go. Have a happy rest of your Sunday. Bye-bye.